Now I invite our next session officials. We have moderator Dr. Devin Tuli and the chairpersons Dr. Surinder Pandav, Dr. Pramish Dada, Dr. Kavita S. and Dr. Purvi Bhagat. Speakers Dr. Surji Chakravarti, Dr. Devendra Maheshwari, Dr. Tamunash Vasu, Dr. Prashant Sivasa, Dr. Parag Sharma and Dr. Swati Upadhyay. So over to you Devin. Yeah, thank you Amit and uh, welcome to all our distinguished uh, office bearers or rather the session bearers for the this one, the last session. Is the last session, Amit? This is the last session and we are still till now keeping on time. So we'll just stick to the okay. time. I keep on time. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, let's uh, go ahead with the first talk by Sarojit. Sarojit, can you please share your screen? And he'll be talking on post-op shallow AC. Sarojit? Yes. Am I audible? You're audible, but your screen is not visible. Yes. I'll do that. Have you shared screen? I hope it is visible now. Yes. A uh, slideshow, please. Slideshow. Yes, I'll, I'll do that. Yes. Okay. So, good afternoon, all of you. It is nice to see you after a long time. And uh, today's topic uh, is management of uh, shallow entry chamber, post traumatic coming. Uh, this is cellular entry chamber is something we don't want to see basically. We hate to see the next day it shallows or even after some time. Uh, let us uh, have a small recap about the grades. Grade one, peripheral uh, shallowing, peripheral idiocorneal touch. Grade two, mid peripheral to uh, near pupillary uh, idiocorneal touch. And grade three is where lenticular, uh, lenticular corneal touch is there. So, this is the picture we don't want to see. That's why we modi uh, modify so many surgical techniques. But still, it happens because we tend to uh, do something which uh, balances between a leaking and not leaking cone. When looking at the uh, causes of salivary chamber, it can be associated with uh, not only a low IOP but also with high IOP. The high IOP causes are people with block melting glaucoma, posterior pushing mechanism, like posterior scleritis. And the low IOP, uh, uh, the usual causes are often uh, wound leak, blade leak, overfiltration, and uh, sacrodiabetes cleft. Let us uh, take a one by one. Uh, first, coming to the leaking blade. Uh, if it is an early leak, there are uh, many uh, options in our hand, like aqua suppressions, withholding uh, or reducing the topical steroid to promote fibrosis. Uh, topical aminoglycosides sometimes may help. Pressure uh, patch with torpedo bandage, large uh, diameter bandage contact lens. When it is uh, on the limbus or near the limbus, it may cover the area. Sinoclinic uh, glue application or corrective surgery with plus minus AMG is the uh, uh, I mean other option. Uh, if it is an old leak, probably there is no role of the above uh, options. The straight away you can go for a lab revision. This is how it looks. Because of the shape, it uh, is called torpedo bandage. Uh, this is a leaking blade just at the edge somewhere here. And uh, when uh, tissue adhesive was applied, we saw it was forming. And after seven days, it has formed nicely with the tissue adhesive falling off. Uh, late leaking blade, there is no other option. We have to excise the whole area. And yeah, we have to excise the whole area this way. and cover it with a scleral patch and close it. Corridor revision is uh, one more important entity. This is mostly uh, associated with hypotonic. Uh, we need to wait most of the corridor revisions, particularly in the early hypotony, they uh, resolve on its own. Uh, we have to uh, uh, Cut back on the contralateral or systemic beta blockers because they are also known to cause hypotonic sometimes. Discontinue any systemic carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and cycloplegia and modulation of topical steroid, systemic steroids, uh, reform anterior chamber with viscoelastics if it's not uh, resolving on its own, and draining reforming anterior chamber uh, with the resuturing of the glove may be other option. A uh, cyclodialysis cleft is uh, another notorious entity. It is uh, rare, uh, rarely detected and rarely uh, visible easily because uh, gonioscopy is difficult in a hypotonus eye. Better visualization with uh, pilocarpine, viscoelastic, and uh, UBM. Uh, 
cytopelagia laser, diathermy, cryotherapy, surgical closure. Uh, the options in this IP is noted after uh, the cleft closure. While there is early postoperative period, if there is low IOP and elevated blab, think of overfiltration. There, the options are pressure patch, large diameter uh, contact lens, compression cell, injection of autologous serum or blood in the blade, reform the entry chamber. Uh, it may be necessary to drain the corridors and restructuring the flag is the last option. These are the pictures of different sizes of single rings. And this is uh, how uh, uh, autologous serum, autologous blood is injected for the overfiltered blade. Uh, the blade compression sutures may be of some help if it is a fresh one. Uh, and aggressive treatment is required if there is lentilocular corneal touch, if there is corneal decompensation and blade failure. Uh, aggressive treatment also is required if there is increasing corridors uh, in due to the time constraint. I will not go to the uh, video, but uh, this is nice, a nice video. I request viewers to see by Dr. Paul Comberg, two sets of sutures are uh, applied. Well, the other entity is uh, early postoperative period when there is high IOP with flat blade and the AC also is shallow. Think of the uh, uh, supracoronal hemorrhage, aqueous misdirection and pupillary block. These are the three notorious entities to cause this. Uh, the predisposing factors for supracoronal hemorrhage are distortion of ocular wall, we have elevation, elevated IOP, post-operative hypotonia, advanced age, aphakia, coughing, salva, digital pressure on eyes, atherosclerosis, stargevel, nanophthalmos, prior surgery, buthalmos, hypomyopia, blood uh, dyspracious or anticoagulation, coronal hemangioma, and carotid cavernous fistula. The list is really long. Uh, there is a dramatic and sudden onset of pain in this case. And if it causes, if it is occurring intraoperatively, immediately closure of the eye is required. In postoperative patients, even with a suture release, uh, it may be precipitated. Uh, supportive therapy, analgesia, across present, cycloplasia is required. Drain when there is a ultrasonic uh, evidence of liquefaction, because otherwise there may be a fresh hemorrhage. Aqueous misdirection is the other notorious thing prior angle closure, iridotomies are not curative in this uh, case, uh, or rather iridotomies are required to uh, establish the diagnosis. Medical therapy, laser therapy, and surgical therapy are the options. Uh, medical therapy with uh, atropine, uh, aqueous suppressions, hyperostomous sticks, uh, steroids, and phenylephrine. Laser therapy like IAC uh, hyaluronidases, uh, uh, preferably peripherally, so that, uh, uh, yes so that the uh, aqueous have some uh, path to escape and shrinkage of ciliary processes with uh, argon laser may be uh, other option. And last option is uh, uh, to go for a uh, first line of vitrectomy uh, along with the anterior hyaluronic phase rupturing. Pupillary block is the last entity. Uh, it, it is a, uh, easy to uh, cure it rather uh, um, after doing an uh, iridotomy, it, it, it is uh, cured often uh, most of the times. And uh, control of inflammation is also necessary for uh, it to prevent uh, the reappearance of the situation. These are the, I mean, uh, three entities side by side. What we can understand is uh, Pupillary block can be easily recovered with a PI. Okay, just this is the last one. Uh, this is the example you can probably see uh, the, even with a mid dilated pupil. Uh, if the uh, iris bomb is not that evident, but you. Uh, I'm really sorry to interrupt, sir, but the yeah, time is up. If you could sum it up, sorry yeah, to interrupt. See, yes. No, that's okay, so Rajit, I think that's, uh, that's you presented very well. Uh, okay, yes, it is over. Yeah. So to conclude, uh, post arcalectomy shallow entry chamber can be associated with both low and high IOP, and we need to pinpoint the cause and treat accordingly, maintaining as much as possible the delicate balance between preserving the visual function and the play function. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I would yeah. uh, request I'll Devinder. Just stop here. Yeah, yeah stop, stop share. Devinder, if you, you can yes. start, and uh, Dr. Kavita, if you, in your experience in Arvind Pondicherry, 
Dr. Kavita? Yes, sir. I think yeah, the what is the commonest the... cause? Just in one line. Yeah. Okay, what is the commonest cause uh, out of everything that has been presented? The commonest cause in your experience of shallow AC? So, so the stop. most commonest cause uh, will be uh, leaking blem and uh, with the use of uh, mitomycin and uh, the mild conjunctival retraction, if it is not uh, done properly, easily we can have uh, a leak. And uh, this can be easily managed as he showed with the uh, bandage contact lens and most of the time with the conservative management it uh, settles down very well. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. I think in the interest of time, we'll move on and we'll take up, uh, we'll ask the panelists to uh, give their comments later on each presentation. Davinder, can you please start on the failing blood? Yes, sir. Good, good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you, AAS and Dr. Amit for giving this uh, opportunity. So today I'm going to talk about failing filter stepwise management. As all we know, the trochectomy is most commonly performed surgery and still, despite of so many surgeries, I think it is the still one of the most uh, commonly performed surgery and it's still gold standard for the surgical management of glaucoma. But the completion of surgery is still the beginning of the healing process that takes several months to complete. It by the frequency. Hello. Uh, it required frequent monitoring and to identify the changes in the blab and provide a window to opportunity to modulate the blab. So what, what is the successful blab? Successful blab, it is a quiet, mildly elevated, diffuse, lack of vascularization and presence of the microcyst and there should be the IP should be appropriately controlled. So how to get the such blab? There should be some preoperative, interoperative, and postoperative measure we have to take. So my previous speaker talked about it. So we will concentrate on postoperative measurement. So most crucial step to um, to recognize the early blood failure. So how to how to diagnose the early blood failure? So always look for the extent of the blood, either is a low or flat, and look for the vasculation, either the mild, moderate, or severe, and look for the presence of the cork screw vessels. Because cork screw vessels is a sign of the initiation of the blab failure, then look for the thickening of blab, and look for the microcyst. Initial period, probably IV may be, IOP may be the normal, or maybe the, may the low, but once the blab failure is started, the gradually IV will rage, and the blab becomes a less diffuse, vascular, flat, and oblucent. So what is the most common cause of blood failure is subconjunctival or episcular fibrosis and second most common is subtenant encapsulation. So what is the site where the blood mostly fail? Either the if blood capsule, there's the subconjunctival fibrosis or the episcular fibrosis. Second cause, either you put the tight blood suture or sometimes the flap is fused with the underlying sclera. And secondly, or what the sclerostomy or ostomy base that is closed. So these are the, um, um, step by management for the topical steroid, distraocular massage, subconjunctal MMC or 5FU and release the suture. So I think we will take one by one. Probably this is the same slide. It's repeated. Sorry. So coming to coming uh, coming to the, the causes of blood failure. Probably this is a fibrin, blood, blood viscoelastic around the ostium, sometimes the tight flap suture or the early scarring as the main cause of the blood failure. So coming to the topical steroid, unlike the cataract surgery in trophectomy, we need the corticosteroid for longer period of time because the topical corticosteroid decrease the wound healing as well as maintain the open fistula. While the cycloplegic decrease the inflammation as well helps in the deepening of the anterior chamber. Sometimes the topical corticosteroid required for three months, even the more than three months also. Then coming to the distal ocular, distal ocular pressure, probably this is the most underrated maneuver in the post-operative management, but it's a very, very helpful, especially in the first to two weeks of the surgery. So how we do the distal ocular massage, we can press or apply the pressure under inferior phonics in the inferior phonics in the sclera or addition to the flap. And some of the, some of the surgeon use the cotton tip applicator. So see in this video, so gently, just I, I used to do the all my ocular massage under the set lamp. So pressing the inferior part, and you see nicely elevated blab is elevated. And this is blab is elevated. We can wait for some time. We can move, give the steroid, and avoid the sutural early period. Then coming to five fluid uro urocell, it helps in uh, reviving the reviving or restoring the blab function. Five fluid urocell enhance the filtration and early postoperative failure. So five mg total dose is five mg and 0.1 ml of 50 mg can be given. Usually it can be given three to ten injection and depend upon within the first two to three weeks. 
it used we used to the 30 gauge needle previously we used previously most surgeons used to give the 180 degree away away from the limbus but recently most of the surgeons use the 5 fu adjacent to the blab or above the blab only things we have to keep in mind the 5 fu is highly epithelial toxic so you should avoid the any spill during the injection then coming to the laser suture lysis, when we find out our blab is failure due to the tight, tight suture, we can perform the suture lysis. It's helpful, especially in the first month of surgery when we are not using antimotoblite. Once we're using antimotoblite, we can do up to the six to eight weeks. These are the various lenses can be used. Most commonly lens uses the Hoskins lens. And we can use the power of 200 to 500 millibar, the exposure time 0.1, and five, spot size 50 micron. So this is, you can see in this video, this is first localize the blab, localize the suture. After localizing the suture, just you cut the suture. After the cutting suture, a blab form if spontaneously, then nothing to do. But most of the time, if blab doesn't form, then it's essential to do the uh, ocular massage. If you don't do ocular, ocular, uh, ocular massage, just you cut the suture, it doesn't make so solve your purpose. Then coming to religiable suture, if you if you don't have the facility of green laser, some people use the religiable suture, either the one religiable suture or two religiable suture, and the suture has to be released within a month. So again, see on the circ lamp, just you have to pull out with the forceps, just you pull out and the suture has come out. If it's black form, well and good, if it didn't form, then again, you have to do the, do the ocular massage. And whenever ostium is closed by the incarceration of iris, vitreous, or dense membrane, or enfolding of the desmet membrane, we can consider the laser disruption. Most commonly used the anti-ag laser. Then, if for the our the all the our uh, conservative measurement like the epistolar epistolar scarring is set, all the ALS has been done, ocular massage, destroyed, everything is going to fail. Then we consider the blab needling. So these are the various techniques of the blab needling. Either we can do in strict lamp or we can in the option theater. I would personally recommend we have to start with the option theater because we have more control in our hand. And once you expert in the option theater, then we should go do into the uh, into the. Um, OPD procedure you can do. So see this video, first I'm injecting the mitomycin, mito, mitomycin C, after injecting my, mitomycin C, just I'm pulling away that, my, just pulling this mitomycin away from the blab area, then 30 gauge needle is bent. After bending the needle, this needle is, uh, this needle is passed away five to six feet away from the limbus and the blab needle has contour has to be follow the globe and slide this needle under the flap and throw the under the we have slid under the under the flap, then we can go into the ATA chamber. Once we enter the ATA chamber, our blob becomes soft. They can appreciate with your traction suture and the end point of the blood needling. And similarly, this video I am using this AC mentor because it's a faking patient, and this faking patient because an AC entry has to be. We should not be done in such cases when we are using the in doing blood needling in the fake cases. I think these are the other uh, blab needling technique. We can use the Grover spatula and other this uh, blab needling we can do in the like open. Maybe we can do the blab needling. And these are some complications of the blab needling. And blab needling can rescue the failing blab, save the patient burden of using multiple glaucoma medication and repeat surgery. So most important, early diagnosis and management of the blab is very crucial. If if always look for the every every time blab extent, blab height, blab vascularity, corkscrew basalt, and micro assist of the vessels, then we get the nice successful blab and we have the successful trabecectomy. Thank you, candidate Tenson. Thank you for finishing in time, Devinder. So I think Amit wants us to do the discussion at the end. So we'll move on to the debates. And uh, Prashant and uh, Paris. Prashant, you can start your screen first. They'll be discussing uh, trab with mitomycin is Prashant and uh, collagen trab is uh, par uh, Parag. Thank you so go much. Ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So is my screen visible now? All good. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, AIO Scientific Committee, and uh, uh, to, for inviting me to this uh, presentation. So my topic is uh, trabeculectomy with vitomycin versus ologen implant. As uh, is uh, already been described, that glaucoma surgery has a high rate of success, but sometimes the success rate is uh, limited because of the fibrosis of uh, subconjunctival space or super the suprasclerous fibrosis. Now. To make the to be more successful, we need an adjuvant. So mitomycin is one of the adjuvant, which is, which is a known anti-neoplastic and anti-fibrotic agent, which is isolated from uh, soil bacterium. 
it is basically a dna cross linker now it's used in ophthalmology is uh, it has a various uses is ophthalmology as a fibroblast inhibitor uh, also in a trap so traditionally how it is used so generally it comes it comes as a powder we reconstitute the mitomycin solution after mixing it with saline and uh, uh, with the sponges generally pvc sponges are used these sponges are soaked in mitomycin and it is applied over the area of application so we can either use it after making a scrub flap or before making a scrub flap so uh, care should be taken not to touch the uh, margin of the flap so experiment have shown that the mitomycin and now the duration of application of mitomycin depends on the surgeon to surgeon and also in the case so it, it the experiment has shown that maximum absorption of mitomycin happens up till 3 minutes of uh, application and after that it is not absorbed mostly this is a small video showing how mitomycin is uh how mitomycin is applied in the form of uh, uh, soaked sponges so here care should be taken to uh, should not touch the mitomycin soaked sponges should not touch the margin of the conjunctiva as the margin should be away and it should be pushed away from the cell flap so that the, you get a more posterior blade here not anterior cystic blade so it should be applied away from the cell flap deep into the posterior and after the application the area should thoroughly washed with 20, at least 20 uh, ml of solution alternatively mitomycin injection can also be injected in subconjunctival space it's a diluted concentration of mitomycin which provides a steady dose of 20 microgram so injection should be given around 6 to 8 mm posterior to the limbus advantage of this method is it provide uh, it provides more diffuse blab and uh, there is less chances of getting an anterior blab and also there is less chances there is no chance of losing any sponge while doing the process in the other hand we have Uh, other adjuvant is called allogen implant it is not a fibroblast inhibitor rather it's a modify it, it modifies the wood hearing response it it forms a collagen matrix it acts as a scaffold in which the fibroblast grows and it goes inside it forms a matrix so in that way it prevents the uh, scarring of subconjunctival space so which is the better in my opinion mitomycin is a better adjuvant as compared to the allogen implant because allogen implant is actually a wood modulator but mmc mitomycin is actually uh, it inhibits the fibroblast proliferation so uh, they are so uh, there are many studies comparing the mitomycin versus allogen this study by rosen inter has they have compared 10 10 eyes with each trabeculectomy and mitomycin with an allogen they found that mitomycin has a better uh, control of intraocular pressure over the period of 10 years the other study is from elu prashad this is dr shisha senthil hatsar all they have compared this is a prospective randomized controlled trial where they compared the result of uh, uh, trabeculectomy with mitomycin and also in uh, allogen implant and they found that in the earlier earlier stages of uh, Tabectomy in earlier phase, post-op period, in six months, one month, and twelve months, the IOP control was better with mitomycin as compared to the allogen implant. In the long follow-up, the control was similar in both the groups. And also, they have also found the incidence of hyphema was more with the allogen implant because the the company has recommended the to put the cells which are little loose, so there is high chance of scler uh, hyphema after putting this implant. This is another study by Arun Nath. They have compared. This is a prospective study again. They have compared the Prashant, it's okay. I think we can discuss further what is left. You presented very well. Thank you. Thanks. You can stop your screen, please. Yeah, yeah, sir, sir. Parag, I would request at the end, Professor Tanush Dada has experience, so sir, if you could uh, comment on this later, and Purvi, sure, if you sure. could comment on, uh, you, if you could comment on uh, Devinder's talk at the end. Parag, please start your screen. slide show parak please start unmute yourself yes i am audible now sir yes all good go ahead okay slide show kar do slide show kar do so uh, basically prashant has to speak in the trabeculectomy with uh, mitomycin or uh, my topic is trabeculectomy with uh, allogen so the idea of trabeculectomy is to regulate the aqueous uh, flow it should not be over filtrated or under filtration the pressure should be in the control the avoid late onset blade thinning and its related uh, complication and to modulate the wound healing response to avoid the scar and 
So do we have the alternative for improving the brain morphology? Yes, we have that without anti-metabolite, we can use the collagen. Collagen, I'm not going to detail about the physical property of the collagen. So what are the advantages of the collagen is to induce the regenerative non-scarring bone healing to process without the use of anti-fabrotic agents. And it acts as a echos reservoir, creating a buffer to prevent plate or shadow racing. And easy to uh, have surgical technique with a single or residual suture and also is enable formation of physiological function in plate and can be deployed readily without prior preparation as surgery is made more time efficient by eliminating the need for the handling or application and disposable for MMC. The other advantages are it is non, not a therapeutic like mitomycin C and whenever you do surgery, the hydraulic pressure of the equus show the matrix provide resistance in the update of the sclerotic tunnel and to maintain the anterior chamber. So this is the blade morphology you can see here, the 6-1 post uh, and then uh, a vascular nice transplant and then you can see the 12-month uh, ozone plant. So when we can do this, all type of primary glaucomas and the specific indication are like thin sclera, either due to the high myopia or UAITs, or if the patient has any kind of indication like cornea toxicity or the cornea compromise in case that uh, we can use the collagen. Uh, so in repeat abeclectomy and all type of secondary glaucoma, we can uh, use collagen. Uh, so why we, why should we should not uh, use uh, mitomycin C? Because it has many complications like overhanging blab, blabitis, cystic blab, and blab related many complications. Other the most related complication is uh, endophthalmitis or kissing coridals. So practical piece for success in the blab with collagen is. Uh, Routine trabectomy till peripheral arachidectomy should be done. I use a uh, triangular scalp flap and tips for the uh, flap closure, which is the key step of the success. The single residual suture, a better option is 10 0 nylon or monofilament white clip at the apex of the triangular flap. Use the thin tying forcep to tighten the suture. So, how much to tighten? That is most important part. The just approximate of the flap over the scalp plate with normal AC depth. It should not so deep and use sometimes the visco to form the AC and uh, we should get a minimal leak is acceptable. If there is excess leak, uh, additional suture may be placed. So uh, what to look intraoperatively or we have to put over the uh, flip just covering the picks of the flip. The size is either 6.2 or 10.2. Uh, how to close the connective tower? Metriplus closure of the connective tower with a proper approximation at the age of using being sutured. And make sure no gaping exposure of collision at the site and also at the limbus. So, and uh, we have to do the sterile peg if it is uh, it should seal peg and it should not like a, a paper like a thin and very thick conjunctiva. We can do panectomy at a small video, but time will not permit. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Parag. <clears throat> so, we'll have the comment at the end. Next, we have uh, Tamunash. Uh, I hope I'm pronounce, pronouncing it correct, Tamunash and Swati. Yes. And, and it, yeah, please start your uh, screen, please, Tamunash. And he'll be talking about in the Corona times for uh, the drop. And uh, Swati will be talking for the chop in the Corona time. Uh, is it uh, full screen, sir? All good. All good. Go ahead. Okay, uh, very good after evening to everyone. Uh, I sincerely thank uh, Dr. Amit sir, uh, Dr. Partho sir, and the whole AIOS team for giving me uh, this beautiful opportunity to participate in this uh, glaucoma subspecialty day uh, in first virtual AIOS. So it's not moving. So, uh, so uh, my topic uh, today is a, a debate uh, in present perspective of pandemic uh, medical management versus early trabeculectomy. So I'll be speaking uh, uh, in the favor of medical management. When, when Amit sir first approached me uh, with this topic, uh, it was in the month, start, beginning of month of April, uh, when India was just about to enter uh, the second wave of COVID-19. But now we have uh, like uh, uh, went through the uh, worst of uh, pandemic ever hit to humankind. And as per IMA, uh, nearly 1,300 doctors have died in the line of duty fighting COVID-19 ever since the pandemic began last year. And uh, this is the May, uh, middle of May statistic. At least 594 doctors have died in the second wave itself. So uh, 
So we all know that uh, close proximity to the patients of COVID-19 um, triggers the spread of infection. There is a study in uh, Wuhan itself where they have shown the practical experience of emergency ophthalmic surgery during the prevalence of COVID-19. They have uh, shown that uh, the most infected workers are uh, from the uh, neurosurgery and ophthalmology department, not from the respiratory department. The cause they have said we uh, work uh, very close proximity to the patients and uh, not only during the surgeries, during the post of visits also and uh, during the procedures also. So uh, in the trabeculectomy surgeries also, we uh, operate uh, very close proximity to the uh, mouth and uh, nostrils and uh, in the post operative uh, visits also, we have to see the patients again and again, uh, making us vulnerable to the exposure. Well, this uh, picture has like uh, very uh, famous now uh, after the COVID-19 uh, infection has start started. This is Li Wen Liang, uh, who was the whistleblower of the COVID-19 infection. And he also died in the line of duty from COVID-19 uh, related complications. He was also actually a glaucoma uh, consultant and he was treating an acute angle closure glaucoma when he contracted the virus. So uh, there is a chance of uh, contracting the virus, COVID-19 virus, uh, while uh, uh, treating the uh, COVID-19 patients or the uh, normal uh, patients through trabeculectomy surgeries and in the post of repeated visits. So why not the medical management when we have so many options there? This is the uh, doctor part. For the patient part also, uh, this is a journal uh, article presented in the Journal of Anesthesia. They have uh, done a cohort prospective cohort study where they have taken cases from 116 countries. This is a all over cases. This is not only ophthalmology cases. This is all sort of cases. They, and they have shown that initial six weeks after the COVID-19 infection, the uh, mortality rate is very high. Uh, and after that, it is uh, less. Uh, not uh, temporizing the uh, uh, surgeries, uh, uh, why not defer the surgeries with the temporizing option like newer generation anti-glaucoma medications like ROC inhibitors or oral uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor in low uh, doses or selective laser trabeculoplasty uh, to uh, defer the surgeries. Should we stop the surgeries? No, absolutely not. Uh, many pa patients need emergency surgeries like uh, the patients who are on maximum uh, tolerated medications and the IOP is still very high uh, who are uh, like continued significant visual loss or who have only one seeing eye or the high level of IOP. In those cases, we have to do the surgeries, but uh, early trabeculectomy in all the cases, I feel after the burnt of second uh, uh, wave, everyone should agree that uh, we should uh, resort more towards the medical management. But at the end, uh, judicial thinking from the ophthalmologist is the uh, utmost importance. Thank you, Tamanash, you made the point very well. And Swati, can you please uh, share your screen now? Swati, you've, give, you've been given the right topic. Tumto, you can do surgery in uh, night time also, so you're good. Swati? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are my slides visible, sir? All good, hai, but slide show nahi hai. Baki sab hai. Good. Yes. Bolna shur kar do. Right, sir. Thank you, AIOS, Dr. Amit and Dr. Puri, ma'am, to give me this opportunity. And thank you, Dr. Tamunash, for bringing up such beautiful points for me to counter that. So I'm going to speak for early trabeculectomy in the management of glaucoma in the present scenario of pandemic. I'm for the motion. So TRAB, as we know, as everybody has said, it is a gold standard surgical option for all types of glaucoma, and it has got excellent long-term success rates, and it is the procedure of choice to ensure constant IOP reduction and uh, preserve the existing visual acuity, and it has relatively low serious complication rates. So, so what do we do with these patients with 0.9 cupping, uncontrolled, uncontrolled IOP, HFA with macular split and on maximum medical therapy. Will you st still give them AGM or will you opt for a trap? So let's debate. So in this COVID-19 pandemic, I was, we were all made to think, but then I will vouch for trabeculectomy for better IOP reduction and for preserving the vision. So in a study done by Subhadra et al, they, uh, for, they, 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 contacted, uh, uh, they contacted patients who were uh, uh, due for uh, treatment between April 1st, 2020 to July 31st, 2020. So they were uh, out of the uh, 80, uh, out of those patients, 88.21 patients. And uh, out of those patients, they 57.3% they were not adherent, not adherent to medication. Now, what was the cause? The main barriers were non-availability of medication, financial difficulties, and 20% of the patients felt that their, uh, the medicines were not doing any good to them. So all said and done, medicines, uh, the patients, our patients are not so medically adherent. So why trabeculectomy? 
So in another study done by Modla et al., they compared trabeculectomy versus medical therapy over a period of 6.6 .6 years, and they found that trabeculectomy was associated with significantly better outcomes in terms of vision, visual fields, better visual uh, BCVA, and number of drugs required. So why trap? So the and uh, and again they would say that the rate of conversion to surgical therapy in the medical group was 34 percent. So ultimately the patients who are on AGM have to un have to come under the knife one day or the other. And it just takes 20 to 25 minutes when combined with FACO. And there is no need for general anesthesia, so the less chances of exposure to the virus. And also, when do we consider, as Samonash has said, that uh, when IOP is poorly controlled on maximum medical therapy, high IOP with progressive visual loss, we consider for trap. There is no other way out. And multiple drug regimens reduce the chances of successful trabeculectomy. So now what do we do? We do a proper preoperative risk stratification and reassurance, attentive patient selection, careful anti-metabolite use, medical surgical technique, and suturing and watchful for post-operative period. So we, what do we do in intraoperatively? We have to have a patient with RT-PCR negative. We use surface disinfection uh, for, uh, for the sheet, for the OT table, and for uh, we use disposable drapes, as we all do. For aerosol spread, the spread, what we can do, patient wearing the mask, surgeon wearing double mask, double gloves, and eye shield. Avoid com communications during the surgery as far as possible and use syringes without cannulas for irrigating that will reduce the aerosol spread. Post of follow up in the pre pandemic era, we were calling the patients for POD 1, POD 10th, and 15th day, POD 30th, and POD 45th day. But during the pandemic, we can call the patient on post of day one, we can increase the follow up for at least they call the second follow up at three weeks, and the next follow up at six weeks. And in the, the three weeks follow up, we can decide on a laser suture lysis or doing the bleb massage. So it's a, it's a very kind of a uh, safety window that we have, uh, and it's not a very early or very so the main barriers of follow-up during the pandemic were lockdown, transport problem, and financial constraints. But these were not going to deter us because lockdown and non-availability of public transport can be uh, counteracted by e-pass, by private vehicles, and by teleconsultation and by uberization of eye care. So we all have been doing teleconsultations through smartphones and through uh, we are. Uh, this teleconsultation, and also we can uberize the eye care because now we have got uh, now we have got instruments like. We, we have instruments like uh, the HFA has been converted into C3 analyzer. Then uh, we have tonometry, which has been uh, gone to IK tonometer. And then fundus photographs can be taken care of by uh, remedy of fundus on four. So to conclude, where there is a will, there is a way. Uh, so option of early trabeculectomy should be considered in law for long-term efficacy. And early trap by experienced surgeons can save the precious money spent on AGM investigations and multiple hospitals. Thank you. Thank you, Swati. Thank you. I'll request Professor Pandav, sir, our chair, to uh, comment on this at the end and also summarize the session at the end, sir. So, but uh, let me ask Purvi to please uh, comment on uh, black failure. Purvi? Yeah. Uh, uh, very, briefly, for, very briefly. Yeah, yeah. Very briefly. Uh, I think the main management of a failing filter is to identify the risk factors preoperatively and then to identify a failing blip uh, postoperatively. And both the cases, I think the main culprit uh, pre-op and post-op is surface inflammation. So you just need to combat that very aggressively, uh, either steroids or needling uh, in the post-operative period. That was as concise as it would be. Uh, absolutely, you're, you're brilliant as always. Uh, Professor Tanut, if you could comment on your experience on lesson. So our experience with so the unmute yourself. I'm unmuted. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So our, our experience with Ologen over, we used it for about five years and the experience was not good. So first is Ologen trap versus trap alone. It did not lead to any reduction in the intraocular pressure. Second question was trap with Ologen versus trap with mitomycin C. Mitomycin C trap was very much successful as compared to Ologen trap. Third combination we tried was adding low dose mitomycin C and ologen versus mitomycin C alone. There also ologen did not show benefit. And in fact, long term outcome, there was a ring of steel around ologen. So we stopped using ologen. We did not find it beneficial. We are still using for some cases of bleb repair where stira is not available. That is the only use, not now for tobacco technique surgery. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that comment. Uh, Professor Pandav, sir, uh, uh, a brief comment on the corona part. I think that was a debate uh, which could be avoided, but uh, what has your experience been? You would uh, do emergency surgery in corona? Uh, yes, sir? we are doing uh, commerce surgeries during club, uh, this corona pandemic. The only thing is the numbers uh, have come down. So you have to be selected, uh, basically. All right. 
Uh, Fair enough. But uh, I also I also wanted you to comment on the first two talks in a general manner, sir, for the fellows or the residents that you teach at PGI, and this is for all the panelists because you are all teachers in your own regard. So, sir, starting with you first, yeah. are you more concerned with blood failure or blood leak in the first four or five days only? I think the initially the immediate concern is the blood leak basically okay. because most of the you know, most of us are have, have such a, you know kind of shifted to a uh, um, phonics based flap and uh, if you don't suture it well uh, they tend to leak and the other problem is, is that uh, if you want to manipulate your blood in the uh, blab in the early post operative period then that because unless you have a good healing already there uh, your ability to manipulate these blabs like mas massage or spreading, you know, or you know, make it diffuse, the blab making yeah. diffuse. So yeah. Thank you, bit, sir. It becomes a bit limited. So Dr. I think, Kavita, yeah. with the, with, Dr. Kavita, with the fellows that you teach, I'm talking about the fellows surgery now. Uh, are you more concerned that they would cause a blood leak uh, in the uh, most traps that they do, or is it blood failure that would lead on in the next one month? Dr. Kavita. Uh, I feel like when we teach always, like uh, the general teaching is uh, uh, the failure of the blood can be managed. But when a patient goes for hypertony and loses the quality of vision, it's very difficult to revive. So we always teach them to you know to overcome uh, uh, the, during the surgical steps, make sure like uh, they don't have a uh, like leaky blood. So our position is like uh, given much importance and uh, blood failure. Are, uh, can be managed in the post-operative period with the sutrolysis and uh, we have all other options. But once yeah, okay. the patient goes for hypertony, we always teach them that the quality of vision is compromised always. Even blab all right. is a cause, cause of actually, because if you have blab, blab Yeah, leak, uh, early blab leak can cause scarring, that's correct. Uh, 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 Dr. Uh, Purvi, uh, what was your comment about the pandemic? Because I think you managed a lot of these patients in the corona times in uh, RIO and the birth. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, I would agree with uh, Dr. Swati to a large extent because for patients to buy the drugs, uh, have their compliance when the economy, travel, and you know, quarantine, isolation, all those factors are multiple. It is, uh, we in fact uh, had to resort to a lot of early surgeries rather than continuing with medication. And uh, some of them, unfortunately, uh, couldn't either come for surgery and couldn't instill the drops. They have been facing a lot of progression of uh, glaucoma. So uh, ultimately, these cases are also now ending up in surgeries. Right. Uh, uh, Professor Tanu, sir, uh, have you had situations, could we? Have you had situations, Professor Tanu, sir, where elective surgery of uh, TRAB or shans are not being done at RP Center now? And you've had where rest. Devin, I, I couldn't hear you. Can you come come again? Yeah, yeah. So I was saying, sir, if you uh, during the enforced uh, stoppage of surgery by the government at RP Center, I'm talking about glaucoma surgery only. You've had situations where now that you've started OPD again, you, you wish that the surgery could have been done because they have progressed. Now they're coming back without surgery. Yeah, During definitely. A lot of our patients are coming back with very advanced disease because lack of care, lack of medication. and But we were continuing to do emergency surgeries, but a lot of patients could not travel to Delhi because of the lockdown. So that has definitely now yeah. we are getting a yeah. lot of patients who are very advanced and even some have lost vision. So that has definitely been a problem. Devin, there is a reminder that I think Thank we are out of time. Yes, sir. But yeah, yeah, that's this okay. is the so last session. Conclude. You could have gone ahead and we've got seven minute, minutes please. ahead. Can, yes. Devin, I think uh, we so need we can the stop. session now. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. Thank you all once again on behalf of AIOS, on behalf of AIOS Scientific Committee and AIOS. I thank